Dropbox versus Google Drive has been an ongoing battle for over a decade now. They're without a doubt two of the most well-known cloud storage services and I know people are eager to learn which is the best. Get your front row seat because I'm putting them head to head and sharing which I think is the better of the two cloud storage heavyweights. And after watching this video, you'll know exactly whether you should choose Dropbox or Google Drive or hell, if you should rather go with some other option that we've been reviewing here in the channel over the last 10 years or so. When it comes to Dropbox and Google Drive, it's not an exaggeration when I say my team of experts and I know all there is to know about each platform. We've been testing them, well, for over 10 years plus, and we use Google Drive on a daily basis as part of Google Workspace here in our company. So I'll be breaking down the head-to-head -head into different categories. I'll cover the general user experience, I'll cover their professional tools and how fast they perform, and I'll also cover their privacy policies and how they manage your data. And of course, we will look at pricing. Okay, so let's start with general usability. Both platforms are available to use via a web browser and they also offer desktop apps for Windows and Mac OS. Dropbox has a slight edge here as it's also available to download on Linux systems. For mobile usage, you can download Dropbox and Google Drive for iOS and Android as well if you prepare managing your files on the go. It's become somewhat of a cliche here at the channel to describe the design of cloud storage services as sleek and minimal. We're definitely in the era of less being more and both Google and Dropbox mirror the same formula when it comes to aesthetics. I'll bring it up on screen, but as you can see, the web browser versions come with easy navigation and you can move through features via the left-hand menu. All pretty standard stuff as you would expect it, right? Now, uploading files follows the standard practice. Either click the upload button or drag and drop files into the web browser app. If you drag and drop too many files at once, like 200 for example, Google Drive may stall, but it's also dependent on the computer you use. Plus, it won't always stall, and I guess it depends on what type of mood it's in or something like that. Well, we couldn't really figure out. Overall, both platforms handle mass uploads pretty well with some exceptions here and there. When it comes to search functionality, both are pretty impressive. You can search the traditional way by typing in the file name into the search bar or, and I really like this, you can search by typing in the content of the file. So how this works, is you search, for example, for Taj Mahal. And even if the term isn't in the file name, it will bring up any photos that have the Taj Mahal in them. Pretty cool, right? So you can do this on both platforms, but when it comes to search, Google takes things a little more advanced. Well, it's the largest search company in the world after all. And hey, if you really look at the squeeze out all that cloud storage can offer, check out our in-depth courses and head over to cloudwords.net slash courses to know more or hit the link in the description box. You know the drill. But there is a wait list currently, so make sure to get in on time and be the first to access those courses. Now, on Google Drive, users can search by terms and phrases like specific paragraphs or quotes in a document. You can also search for files by owners, pending owners, and creators of files, which is very useful for getting speedy access to your content, especially if you're having a large team or if you're dealing with thousands and thousands of files. The desktop apps also follow a similar user experience and design as they exist as folders on your computer. You can pick and choose which folders on your computer you want to sync to either cloud storage service, which is great. There are some nuances and differences between the two when it comes to desktop apps. Google Drive lets you sync any folder in your computer, whereas Dropbox only lets you select a handful. And on the flip side, Dropbox offers block level synchronization, which means files update in the cloud in segments when they're changed locally on your computer. And in theory, this provides quicker transfer speeds, especially when editing very large files. But 
We'll see if it makes a difference in our speed test a little later in this review. The mobile apps are very similar to the web apps on each platform. You can access your files, upload new files and share files with others. And both are very intuitive. You can also scan documents and have the contents of the document uploaded to the cloud. And I really love this because it allows me to easily back up my paperwork. It also ensures I have a backup in case the physical copy is lost or damaged, which can happen sometimes. You also have the option to back up files from your smartphone or tablet manually or automatically. Google works slightly differently, however. You can only back up photos and videos, and this is done through the Google Photos app rather than Google Drive. So while it is possible, you do have to use a separate app to make it work. Personally, as someone who takes a lot of photographs on my travels, I choose automatic backups with my cloud storage. I find it's the best way to ensure none of the images get forgotten or lost when I need to free up space on my cell phone. And also, I might just forget to hit the backup uh, button and I might lose all my photos if I don't think about it. So having it automatic is just the way to go for me. Overall, it's hard to separate the two when it comes to all round usability on their apps. They've both been around long enough to know, well, what consumers want in the platform. And they're both doing a solid job of meeting that demand. I call it a tie in this one. So next up, I'm looking at productivity and collaboration tools. By default, Google has the advantage as Google Drive obviously integrates with the entire Google Workspace suite of tools such as Google Docs, Sheets and Slides. And we use Google Docs for our editorial work here at CloudWords. And in my experience, it's the best online document collaboration tool, especially for remote companies like ours. But Dropbox is trying to offer more tools. It has Dropbox Paper, for example, which you can use to craft documents. Google Docs has more functionality overall, but Dropbox Paper has come a long way and will be fine for many users. Dropbox doesn't offer slides or sheets equivalents though, so you'll need to look to third-party integrations for those. On that note, you can integrate Dropbox with Microsoft Office Online tools. This allows you to use Microsoft's Office tools, including Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Dropbox plays well with Google Documents too, allowing you to edit a Google document directly inside the Dropbox platform. So even their competitors, they do allow cross integration. There's a little limitation on either platform in terms of the tools you can use for work. The advantage of Google Drive is you can keep everything on brand and remain within the Google workspace without relying on third party tools. But it would be wrong to say that Dropbox doesn't allow you to be as productive. It just takes a different route, but overall arrives at the same destination. One slight advantage for Dropbox users is the version history. Users can go as far back as 180 days to recover an older version of a file. Google, on the other hand, limits you to 30 days of version history, which isn't great in comparison and could lead you into trouble. In terms of working on a document with someone else, that's all good on all platforms. You can work in real time with other members of your team. You can also leave comments and feedback to other team members who can pick up the work when you're essentially not available. Away from documents, you can leave comments and feedback on files like videos and images without the need to download them from the cloud. But if I had to choose one service for productivity, it's Google Drive. Its in-house tools feel more refined than what Dropbox is offering. Plus, most people in the professional space are more accustomed to Google's tools, making it easier to onboard new team members. And I just wish the company would extend that version history. That would be delicious. Okay, so let's move on to speed. How quickly can each platform get those files into the cloud and download them from the cloud? Also, what type of pressure are they putting on your computer's resources when they're in use? So as you might or might not know, we do our speed testing in-house at CloudWords. We upload a five gigabyte folder of mixed files and then download it to our computer. We do this 
twice just so we can like measure for consistency. And this has been our approach for several years now, and we've plenty of data on these two platforms. Performance has been consistent, and year on year we've seen speeds improve, but only slightly. Let's look at the data. Google Drive had an average upload speed of 7 minutes and 9 seconds. Dropbox was marginally quicker with an average upload speed of 7 minutes and 4 seconds. This isn't going to be noticeable in real-world scenarios. Both of them were stable throughout, but we found Google Drive to put a little more pressure on the CPU, but only at the start of the upload. For downloads, Google Drive had an average speed of 7 minutes and 25 seconds, and Dropbox came in at 7 minutes and 19 seconds. And again, not noticeable to the naked eye, but important for our metrics because we need to declare a winner after all, right? This one is a little bit of a tie. Um, they're both great when it comes to speed and performance, and they've both approved over the years. We've been testing them, and the speed differences are there, but not really noticeable. And what we want to gauge is how noticeable is it in day-to-day -day work. Yes, we do care about the individual seconds and minutes of the outcome, but the overall practice of how a service feels, how it feels in practice, how fast can you open a document, how fast can you back up your files, this is essentially what we care about uh, when we test it for you guys, because this is what you will notice. Privacy, privacy, privacy. Where to begin? Look, it's no secret that neither Dropbox or Google Drive are champions of user privacy. In fact, a lot of their business model is dependent on accessing and sharing user data. And this problem is only to grow with the recent AI services and AI data hunger that a lot of these large companies have because once they scraped all the internet, guess what is next? It's files on cloud storage that they're gonna scan for their language models. So there you are. For both Dropbox and Google Drive, there is no zero-knowledge encryption like, for example, on Sync.com and PCloud, for example, both services that we like essentially here on CloudWords. So both services can scan your data for whatever purpose it seems fit. They can each share your data with other companies or law enforcement or the next general artificial intelligence, as well as they're transparent about doing this, right? You can read this in their privacy policy. Of course, this is all a little packaged <laughs> as a way to keep each platform free of bad actors or to improve the services, but companies with you know, like Google and Dropbox and I mean, I'm just not convinced their intentions are always so pure, especially Google, who relies heavily on ad revenue. In my opinion, they both essentially tie this round, but for all the wrong reasons. If you want a more under the radar type of experience, then I reckon it's a good idea to look elsewhere and we have enough videos here on the channel so you get some inspiration which service might be a good fit for you. Okay. Let's move on to security. Now, security can be viewed in essentially two ways. There's the standard security every cloud storage service provides, and then there are the other in-house security measures a platform takes to protect your data. In terms of standard practices, both services are secure. They both come with AES 256-bit and TLS encryption for when your files are sent and arrive on their servers. As far as we're aware, there haven't been any data breaches on either platform within the last decade or so. All other bells and whistles include being able to add two-factor authentication for when you log in to either platform and users on the Dropbox business plan also have the option of single sign-on as the user signed up to Google Workspace. When it comes to file sharing, I must say Dropbox takes the edge. Users can password protect their shared files and also determine how long someone can access a file for by adding expiry date, which is super useful. Google, for whatever reason, has chosen not to offer this feature. I don't know why. It would be great for collaboration. And for that reason, Dropbox takes the edge when it comes to security. It's time for the big question. 
how much do these services cost? Well, first up, they both have a free plan, ideal for light and personal use. Google Drive is the more generous of the two, offering 15 gigabytes of free storage. Dropbox only offers two gigabytes and oh, if you're looking for the best free cloud storage, we have a video for that that you can find by clicking up here or down in the description box, there is a link as well. When it comes to paid plans, you can pay month to month or annually. Annual plans work out cheaper in the long run and I recommend signing up for those if you intend on using either service long-term. To keep things simple, I'm going to refer to the annual costs of each service. Google offers more plans across the board and the entry level plan, which gives you 100 gigabytes of storage space costs $19.99 per year. It's obviously a lot more space than the free plan, but still really only targets moderate users. Dropbox kickstarts its paid plan with two terabytes of storage space. And for that, you'll pay around $120 per year. And Google Drive's two terabyte plan is cheaper, costing only $99.99 per year. Dropbox top plan for single use comes with three terabytes of storage space for $199 per year. And when it comes to offering a ton of storage space, Google goes all the way up to 30 terabytes, but you can't pay yearly. That level of storage space costs around 150 per month or so. Currently, there's no equivalent on Dropbox personal plans. There are also business plans available on Dropbox and Google Workspace plans with Google, obviously. So for Teams, Dropbox plans start at $16 per user per month when you sign up for an annual subscription. Each user gets three terabytes of storage space and your account requires a minimum, minimum of three users. Google's entry into its business plan starts at $6 per user per month with an annual subscription and each member gets access to 30 gigabytes of storage space. And if you pay $18 per user, then you can bump that to five terabytes on Google's Business Plus plan. Both offer video conferencing features within their business plans and you can record meetings as well. Dropbox also offers transcripts for videos you record or upload. Very, very handy if you have a lot of meetings. I will leave a link to the reviews of each platform in the description so you can get more of an idea on what their business plans offer and how they compare. There's a lot more to it that, that can fit in one single video. So Google wins this round, both for its diversity of plans and the fact it's slightly more affordable than Dropbox. So what's the verdict? It's tricky. Google Drive takes the advantage when it comes to productivity and we can't overlook its range of plans and pricing structure, but Dropbox has more sync options on desktop and better security options for your files. It's, it's a really tough one and you may call me a cop out, but I'll say this. If you're a remote team looking for a straightforward solution for collaboration, go with Google Drive, no questions asked. But if you don't mind paying a little more for cloud storage and want features like block level sync and password protection for your files, Dropbox is the way to go. But what do you think? Who would win your Google Drive versus Dropbox head-to-head -head competition? Let me know in the comments and let's get a conversation going. Also, please subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. Tap the bell icon so YouTube pings you when I next publish. See you next time. Bye-bye.